entrance antiphon. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Whom shall I dread? When those who do evil draw near, they stumble and fall. Good morning. Good morning. This morning's Mass has been offered for us and our families, and in particular Dr. Matthew Alico, and Dr. Laura Brenz, and the parishioners of St. Francis Xavier. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brother and sister, let us acknowledge our sin and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. King to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, from whom all good things come, grant that we who call on you in our need may at your prompting discern what is right, and by your guide do it. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. reading from the first book of Kings. At the mountain of God, Horeb, Elijah came to a cave where he took shelter. But the word of the Lord came to him, go outside and stand on the mountain before the Lord. The Lord will be passing by. A strong and heavy wind was rendering the mountains and crushing rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, there was fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire, there was a tiny whispering sound. When he heard this, Elijah hid his face in his cloak and went and stood at the entrance of the cave. A voice said to him, Elijah, why are you here? He replied, I have been most zealous for the Lord, God of hosts, but the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to the sword. I alone am left, and they seek to take my life. The Lord said to him, Go take the road back to the desert near Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazael as king of Aram. Then you shall anoint Jehu, son of Misha, as king of Israel, and Elisha, son of Shaphat, of Abel Mahola as prophet to succeed you. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm. I long to see your face, O Lord. Hear, O Lord, the sound of my call. Have pity on me and answer me. Of you my heart speaks, you my glance seeks. I long to see your face, O Lord. Your presence, O Lord, I seek. Hide not your face from me. Do not in anger repel your servant. You are my helper. Cast me not off. I long to see your faces. I believe that I shall see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord with courage. Be stout hearted and wait for the Lord. I long to see the face of the Lord. Shine lights in the world as you hold on to the word of life. Be with you. <clears throat> A reading from the Holy Gospel. 
according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard it said, You shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, Everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It's better for you to lose one of your members than to have your whole body thrown into Gehenna. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It's better for you to lose one of your members than to have your whole body go into Gehenna. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife must give her a bill of divorce. But I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, unless the marriage is unlawful, causes her to commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Catholic spirituality has always encouraged us to avoid the so-called occasions of sin. These are situations in which we know that we will be severely tempted to sin. We, ha we all have situations like that because we all have a fallen human nature. Certain tendencies within us seem to be attracted to, to sin. Even when we know that acting against God's wise plan for us is bad for us and for all, and for all of those around us, knowing that we have these tendencies of our fallen nature can help us avoid situations in which those tendencies may be encouraged. We call those occasions of sin. This is partly what Jesus is getting at when warning us to cut off the causes of sin from our lives. We must ask ourselves, what are my occasions of sin? Certain relationships or social situations? Certain habits of laziness or indulgence? Sin reaps destruction because it abuses God's gifts, using them for purposes which God never intended. Being convinced of that can give us the courage we need to avoid the situations that blind us and make sin seem attractive. In this context, Jesus reminds us that sin really matters. Whenever we choose to act in contradiction to God's plan for our human nature, we cause damage to our souls, which is even more lasting and dangerous than damage to our bodies. This is why Jesus exhort, exhorts us to cut away anything in our lives that leads us to sin. His image of cutting out our eye or cutting off your hand, uh, is, if they lead us to sin, is not meant to be taken literally. In fact, it can't be. Neither our eyes nor our hands can ever commit sin, since sin is always a choice against God's wise plan for us, and choices are made in a person's spirit. But to choose against God's plan for us can cause us eternal damage by separating us from his friendship forever. The image of it being preferable to lose a hand or an eye rather than lose our very self by going to hell is a visit to illustration. Jesus really wants us to know the truth, and that is that our choices matter. We can use God's gifts for, good purpose, for the good purposes which, for which he gave them to us, as is the purpose of our sexuality which is to bring us together in a spousal relationship of love from which new families are formed, where we can abuse his gifts and wreak destruction on ourselves and on others. Jesus really wants us to, take the, to make the right choices, and he'll help us do so. We just have to be humble enough to accept the truth of who we are as human beings 
with a specific human nature created by God, a nature that flourishes when we obey the natural law that God has written inside of it. Let us take some time this week to spend more quiet time with God. In this space, may our hearts and minds be open to listen to what God says to us. May we be open to a deeper understanding of who God is and how God is present in our lives. May we come away with a new awareness of how God commissions each of us to serve him in this world. And may this Eucharist strengthen us on our faith journey. Uniting our minds and hearts as one, let us bring our prayer to the Lord. For all members of the church, may God's fulfillment of the law continue to inspire greater discipleship in the world. Let us pray to the Lord. For our local leaders, may God's justice guide them in their efforts to practice fairness to all. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who face difficult family divisions, may God's love be with them as they seek healing for their wounds. Let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For our faith community, may God's call to service continue to bring us closer to one another and to him. Let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For all the faithful departed, may the Lord bring them to everlasting life. We pray to the Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, you have commissioned us as your disciples to bring your word to those we encounter. We ask that you hear and answer our prayer according to your will, through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let, let, us, let us join together and recite the prayer for protection and healing from coronavirus. Lord Jesus, you travel through towns and villages, curing every disease and illness. Come to our aid in the midst of the coronavirus, and that we may experience your healing love. Heal those who are sick with the virus. May they regain their strength and health. Bring those who have died from the virus to eternal peace. Protect doctors, nurses, and healthcare professionals as they help the sick. Guide researchers to develop a vaccine. Be with leaders of nations. Give them the wisdom to act with true concern for their people. Stay by our side in this time of uncertainty, anxiety, and sorrow. Grant us your peace. We pray this in your most holy name, Jesus. For you are our loving and healing Lord, our Lady of Prompt Succor, St. Joseph, St. Francis Xavier, St. Rock, and St. Rosalie. Pray for us. Let us recite also our family prayer. Loving and faithful God, through the years the people of our archdiocese have appreciated the prayers and love of Our Lady of Prompt Succor in times of war, disaster, epidemic, and illness. We come to you, Father, with Mary, our mother, and ask you to help us in the battle today against violence, murder, and racism. We implore you to give us your wisdom that we may build a community founded on the values of Jesus, which gives respect to life and dignity of all people. Bless parents that they may form their children in faith. Bless and protect our youth that they may be peacemakers of our time. Give consolation to those who have lost loved ones through violence. Hear our prayer and give us the perseverance to be merciful life and human dignity in our community. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Our Lady of Prompt Succor, hasten to help us. Mother Henriette de Leo, pray for us that we may be a holy family. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth, the book of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Amen. 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Praise my brother and sister that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look kindly upon our service, O Lord, we pray that what we offer may be an acceptable oblation to you and lead us to grow in charity through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is to the right answer, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, His death we celebrate in love, His resurrection we confess with living faith, and his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with angels and saints, we praise you as without end. We acclaim. Holy Lord. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the Father of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the beautiful, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At that time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and gave it thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave this to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have kept us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be guided to work by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Gregory, our Bishop, and all the clergy, remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us, O we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Apostle and all the saints who have led you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor be yours, forever and ever. At the same moment and from my divine teaching, we dare to say, our Lord, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Give us, Lord, we pray for every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and save for all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostle, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the face of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Read an antiphon. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my saving strength.
let us pray. May your holy word, O Lord, free us, we pray, from doing evil, and lead us to what is right. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in each other. I am speaking God. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God reveal him we not be pray, and do the household grace of the enemy host. By the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world speaking the truth.